Before this video starts, I want to thank you to all the support on part 1 and to everyone who watched. But before we begin season 2, for those who haven't seen the season 1 video, it's good, I promise. But for those who haven't seen the season 1 video, let's recap season 1. So Emma is a plant activist and the nosiest person on earth. Manny is the sweet innocent girl who lives in Emma's shadow. She doesn't really do much in season 1 but just keep watching and you'll see. Paige is the girl boss of the school and she's a bit of a, if you know what I'm trying to say. Liberty is the school nerd and the last person you want to hang out with. JT is the class clown, comedic relief. Toby is his friend. Sean is the bad boy of the school. He used to date Emma, but after this, eh, not so much anymore. Spinner is the bully slash jock of the school and also Jimmy's best friend. Jimmy is the black kid at the school who likes basketball, has rich parents, and was dating Ashley. Speaking of Ashley, Ashley. So Ashley is very emotional. She makes everything about her, she pop pills at the party, and she ruined her relationship with everyone. Also, Toby is her stepbrother. Terry has insecurities. She's bigger, so she feels like no one will ever like her. Yeah, that's about it. All right, now that we're all up to speed, let's watch some Degrassi. So season two opens with the two-parter when doves cry. In part one, we're introduced to a brand new character in the mix, Craig, and Craig has problems at home. What, what happened at six o'clock? I know, uh, I'm sorry, it's just the light outside. <laughs> Late summer, incredible. And I just, uh... I distracted, missed dinner. Yeah, uh... Dad, I'm sorry. When I say six o'clock, I don't care how great the light is, you're home. Do you understand me? Just clean it up. So once we get back to Degrassi, we learn that Degrassi is now a 7th through 12th grade school, instead of it just being a 7th and 8th grade like last season. So Sean and Craig become friends and hit it off pretty quickly. Is Degrassi a high school and a blind school this year? Sorry man, I'm lost. Buy a map. Already got one. I'm not blind, just uh... Hey boys, who's the new guy? Directionally challenged. Hey cutie. At my lab. Here, I'll, I'll show you. And when classes begin, Mr. Simpson is now the homeroom teacher for the older kids and Mrs. Kwan is now the teacher for the younger kids. And everyone still hates Ashley. How was your summer? Anyway, about my hair. Yeah. Give him time. I'm sure the... You know, what, forgive and forget? Right. So Craig and Joey's daughter are supposedly brother and sister, and Toby is using his computer smarts for the wrong reasons. And JT has found his new catch for the year. Joey goes to his wife's gravestone, and Craig is creeping around. And once we get to his house, we see him in a dark room developing pictures, and we see why he is so focused on taking these pictures. So Craig and his dad have dinner, and we find out his mom actually left them for Joey, and that Joey tried to call his house. So Operation Page has commenced and JT isn't off to a great start. Craig talks to Emma and Manny and Manny has a huge crush on Craig. And Emma and Craig have a history with Craig's stepdad Joey being friends with Emma's mom. So Craig's dad goes and confronts Joey about a voice message he left on his system and he's out of there. So JT isn't giving up and Paige and her friends come to an agreement. Has my rep fallen to the point where a loser like JT thinks he can ask me out and get away with it? It's hilarious, you should totally do it. Yeah, I mean, Paige and JT on a date? Oh yeah. Never going to happen, ever. Hmm. Everyone has their price, like say 30 bucks, enough to get your hair done. You honestly think I would go out in public with it for 30 bucks? A light evening with Frodo or an entire day gagging through cobwebs in your parents' garage? Yeah, you know, it, it's about the earwigs. Sharp, pinchers, just $30 ring. in cash. Fine, but there will be conditions. Big conditions. So the party's at Emma's house and everyone's having a great time. But Joey notices Craig and wants to speak with him and tell him about what happened at the dealership. And Craig takes it, all right? Wait, you talked to him? He came by the dealership this afternoon. Craig, come on. Your dad won't allow it. What do you want me to do? No problem, I get it. Hey, uh, Miss Nelson, thanks for the hot dog. So Craig comes home, and this happens. Are you looking for something? What are you doing? Are you looking for something? What are you, are you doing? What are, you... are you looking for something? I worked my ass off for you. Do I get... What do I get in return? I get this. I get fries. I get 
Part two opens up with Craig's dad giving him money for a new camera and JT's dreams come true. JT. Uh, hey Paige. To what do we owe this pleasure? This honor? This, uh, I just wanted to apologize for the other day when you asked me out. Sorry. Oh, okay. Movie in a bite, your treat. Really? Great. Tonight, the mall, 5 p.m. Sharp. So Emma runs into Craig and has a bright idea. I'm just about to pick Ange up from school. Has your dad said you can't hang out with me too? And hey, how was I to know you were gonna go pick up my sister? Now they're on their way to pick up Craig's sister and his sister has another bright idea. <laughs> Can we go to the park? I don't know guys, I've got a whole chapter of math homework so the TV's gonna help babysit. But I want to. Well, I, I could take her, right? <laughs> right? Drop her off on my way home? I don't know, guys. And you say, please. Please, Emma, please. Hurt, hurt, hurt. Just for a little bit, okay? But I don't think it was a good idea. Closed up early today. Where's Angie? Um, she's. She inside with your mom? No, she's. Emma, where is she? She's with Craig, okay? You let her go off with him? To the park. It's only fair since his dad won't let him. Excuse me? Joey, he's her brother. And you are just her babysitter. So leave the parenting decisions to me. Meanwhile, Paige can't be caught dead with JT and Craig just four for four with these ideas. Is that a million dollars? It's a lot, but not that much. Remember British Columbia? It's beautiful. The weather's warm. I don't remember. You were just a baby. You know, this isn't a million bucks, but it is enough to get us there. Together? Let's go. The bus station's not far. Come on. Angie? Angie? Daddy! I was worried. I thought you guys were going to the park. We did, but uh, Ange got hungry. Well, I'll, I'll take it from here, okay? Let's go home, honey. Craig, can Daddy come too? Come where? On the bus. Craig's got a million dollars in his pocket. <laughs> it was for Ted. <laughs> we were just playing. Oh, show me no, money. No, no. We're moving to British Columbia. What are you doing? You think you can just take her and go somewhere with her? No, I don't. It was pretend. Yeah, like that money in your pocket is pretend, right? Just stay away from Angie, okay? Like your dad said. <laughs> yeah, Joey, I can't do that. Look, I mean it! So Craig is devastated and goes home, but then the worst happens. Hello, Joey. What do you want? No, go ahead, I'm still here. Sean? Hey, hey man, um... I was wondering if you were, uh, if you were doing anything tonight. Greg. Oh, what, what's that? Open this door now. Yeah? This is my house. Can yeah. I stay open the door, you open the door. Craig! Okay, I'll be right over. So JT and Paige's date is going fine, but Hazel and Spinner show up. Hazel, what are you doing here? 
What are you doing? Looks like you're having fun. You've more than earned this. Wet dream time is over. Let's go. You got paid to go out with me? Sue me. Sean tries to help Craig with this situation, but Craig has other plans. I may go solo. I've, I've got the money. I'm thinking BC. Are you serious? Yeah, deadly serious. I'm out of here. Tonight. You're gonna wind up on the streets. They suck. Then come with me. We'll watch out for each other. Craig, come on. I, I can't leave. Look, uh, before you asked me if my parents hit me. Right. Did I? So? I don't know. Does, does your dad hit you? Both Sean and Emma rush to Joey's place and tell him what's been going on. Joey! Joey! We need to talk to you. It's about Craig. He said he's going to BC, but you know he's just gonna end up on the streets. If he doesn't kill himself first. What? Joey and Sean get in the car and go searching for Craig, but Emma has a good idea where he is. They find Craig and he freaks out, but Joey knows the truth. He hits you, doesn't he? Doesn't he? Does. So we're back at the grassy and Paige apologizes to JT, but let's not act like JT isn't a Risley bear. Having some residual guilt about Friday night. That said, I really needed the money. Wow. You know what? That makes me feel a whole lot better. JT, you're a good date. If you weren't 5'1 in, in a subterranean social strata, I'd maybe even consider going out again. Really? Yes, but no. Sorry, hon, I only date up, nothing personal. Sure, of course. But, um, you know, I, I would feel better if... If what? Spit it out. Call me romantic, but I always imagine my first date ending in a kiss. No way. Come on, Paige. You'd be making my dreams come true. We're so even. And the episode ends with Craig going to live with Joey. In episode three, we get some revolutionary news. So you know that Mr. Simpson and I have been friends for a long time? Yeah, and he's been here all the time lately. I know, I know, that's sort of what this is about. What's that supposed to mean? It means that we're more than just friends, Em. We've been dating each other. Mr. Simpson, he's my teacher. Emma lets Manny know there's a breakdancing 80s dance competition at school for some hockey tickets, and Spinner and Jimmy plan on killing it, but there seems to be stiff competition. We got all the moves. Leafs, here we... Hey. Well, um, you could always buy tickets. So the Mr. Simpson Emma thing isn't going too well. Hey, you and your mom were friends. What changed? She had a thing for him back in high school. Rekindle love. And Manny thinks Craig has a crush on Emma. So the 80s nostalgia is everywhere at Degrassi. And Emma isn't having it. And it only gets worse when she finds out Mr. Simpson is taking her mom out on a date. But Emma is fed up with the Spike Simpson reunion and decides to crash the dance. They get dressed up, jump on the bed, and make their way to Degrassi. We see Spinner practicing for the dance. But who the fuck is, is that? <laughs> So Craig helps the girls sneak in and Jimmy and Spinner face off. Oh, who are you supposed to be? Michael Jackson? Um, yeah, Spin. He is. He leaves his bag on the floor while he uses the bathroom, but someone grabs it. I wonder who it is. So Emma and Manny make it in thanks to Mr. Craig, and it's time for the breakdancing competition, and we find out who took Jimmy's bag. So Jimmy performs, and oh, 
That's why he had an extra set of clothes. Now it's Spinner's turn. All right, people, get ready for some serious tuning in. That's not my music. So it's time for a slow song, and Craig walks up to Emma and Manny, but he asks Manny for a dance. Huh. Emma is upset about this, of course, and to make things worse, this happens. <clears throat> Emma, what are you doing out here? You should be in bed. Really? So should you two. Emma! Sean and Jimmy reminisce about being idiots, and Emma and her mom talk about everything going on and come together. Episode 4 opens with the Ashley hate train going strong. Retro roller skating party. Retro roller skating party? That sounds cool. <sighs> Funny how something is cool one year and so totally uncool the next. Kind of like people. I get it, Paige. You don't have to invite me to your dumb party. Oh, but I was kind of hoping you could take drugs and act like a total freak and destroy everything. Oh, wait. You did that last year. Paige tries to press the new girl, but she's not falling for that shit. Ellie, right? Uh-huh. Here's the deal. Hazel and I, best friends, but Hazel's stuck on the other side of the room. You, however, are right here. And you want me to switch? I knew you'd understand. Um, hun, maybe you didn't hear me. I did. Loud and clear. Thanks. Ashley is pleading her case to become friends with Paige, and surprisingly, she considers it. Toby is being Toby and losing with the girls again. Now, Ashley is trying to plead her case to Jimmy, and he falls for it, and agrees to be cool with her. So Toby likes anime now, but another girl took his anime CD, and it's... Me. Toby Isaacs, meet Kendra Mason, my two biggest anime fanatics. Meet me at lunch tomorrow and I'll hand this off. What do you say? Great. I'll see you at lunch then. <laughs> okay. The gang is skeptical to let Ashley back in the group. And she makes up and I think Paige is starting to be cool with her again. Later, Sean asks Ashley on a date. And Ashley is letting her old self out again. And Toby just can't catch a break and gets pressed by Spinner. Why? Well, she seems to know you. She wouldn't stop talking about you just now, actually. Really? Cool. Not cool. See, her last name is Mason. My last name is Mason. Gee, what's the connection? Your brother and sister? No, but she's... she's... Adopted, moron. And only in grade seven. So, go near her, I turn your glasses into contacts. Terry exposes Ashley's date plans with Paige, and Paige also thinks Ashley is up to her old ways. Toby disrespects Spinner and talks to Kendra anyway. So the Jimmy and Sean feud continues. Sean Cameron. Jimmy Brooks. I thought me and you were cool, man. There is no me and you. Fine by me. One warning, though, you stay away from my girl. What are you talking about? Ash and I are a thing again. Really? Yeah, really. Guess I'll have to ask her that when I take her out on Friday. Hey, 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 take it easy. You're right. Yeah, I'm fine. If Jimmy knows what's good for him. And my favorite Degrassi scene of all time plays. Hey, Jimmy. Don't talk to me, you slut. Damn, Ashley cannot catch a break. So Toby is still scared to talk to Kendra, and Paige presses Ashley again. Damn, it's a lot of pressing happening this episode. Kendra confronts Toby. What about the gym earlier? You ignored me then, too. I don't get it. What did I do wrong? It's just that, uh, well, you're in grade seven, I'm in grade eight. And, uh, and we can't be friends? Why not? 
You're afraid of my brother. No, no, that's not it. It's just... Look me in the eye and tell me that's not it. You coward. And Ashley is losing once again this episode. Hey, Friday night, we can see whatever you want, you know? It's up to you. Oh, okay, great. Um, but I was wondering, would you totally hate me if I postponed? You don't want to go out with me, do you? I, I do, but... But you're seeing Jimmy again, right? This has nothing to do with Jimmy. Does it have to do with Paige and... Yeah. Whatever. This episode is just crazy. But before this episode is over, Toby has some business to handle. What do you want? I want to talk to your sister. Isaacs, move on. Now. <sighs> no. No? No. You are aware I could rip out your bowel and eat it for breakfast? Yeah, I'm willing to take that risk. As long as you know what happens if you break her heart, we're cool. And right before the episode ends, Terry has made her choice. Episode 5 opens with foreshadowing for a science fair and Emma ain't playing that Archie Simpson shit. Thanks, Mr. Simpson. Emma, um, Mr. Simpson is fine for school, but when we're here, I, I'd like it if you call me Archie. Would you pass the Kung Pao, Mr. Simpson? Emma complains to Manny about Mr. Simpson, and Jimmy confesses his love for Ellie. We would have fun on a date. Guaranteed. All I need is your phone number. Jimmy, your ex is my new best friend. You're cute, but no. So Spinner is having lumberjack issues. And it's been like this all week. A girl walks by and just, bam. Emma confronts the boys about problems with their science fair project. I'm not eating any more granola. You don't have to. You already messed up my project. You messed up my life. Your health food unleashed the beast within. Back at Emma's house, Mr. Simpson tries to help, but she not playing that Archie shit, I'm telling you. So, how's the project? Does it look a disaster? What's the matter? <sighs> JT and Spinner are the matter. My hypothesis fell apart. You know, Einstein said that imagination is more key than knowledge. Maybe you need to get a little creative. Look at things from another angle. Gee, that's helpful. How handy it is to have you right here in my house. It's now the day of the science fair. And so far, I think JT has the best project. The woman of the future. Do I want to know what this is? It's a replacement for silicone and breast implants. 100% natural. Made of water, flour, and lard. Uh, Mr. Radich, would you like to see my project? Yes, please. So Manny gives Emma an idea for a project and she changes the whole thing. Spinner tries to suppress his urges with food. What are you doing? I'm fighting the health food molecules. Chemicals and preservatives are the antidote. It's not the health food molecules giving you boners, you realize that. How do you know? Because that's stupid. You're stupid. I mean, all I have to do is get back my chemical enriched metabolism and I'll be back to my old self. We're waiting for you to begin. Could you two move any slower? And Emma wins the science fair and some people are happier than others. So Spinner finds out there's perks to having his condition. Okay, look, it's not all bad. Inconvenient, yes, but it does have its upside. What? Well, whatever's giving me boners is turning me into a major chick magnet. Hey. Uh, and girls have been looking at me. Different. Different. Like you're crazy. Now, take this. Sheila let me take this stuff for free. She even complimented me on my ensemble. Hey. Okay. 
What's your point? That the entire female race is a slave for Spinner. So why fight it? Fruit and only fruit from now on. Meanwhile, at media class, Manny and Emma are texting, but make a huge mistake. Or a CD-ROM drive or any other graphical adapters. Now, what happens if the bus misses a device? You can't just walk to the next stop, right? Anyone have any ideas? So a Spinner's newfound superpower, he pulls Ellie, and Jimmy is not having it. Thank you. I'll be calling you. Ellie's number? Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Jimmy, I'm a lover, not a fighter. Okay, okay, okay. Listen, evolution class. Charles Derwin said that man has to spread his seed to survive. So dating Ellie is just part of my human duty. It's it's Darwin. The, the guy's name is Darwin. There's, there's no Derwin. Whatever. Oh, and uh, have you ever considered changing your diet? Because um, with a little health food, this could have been yours. Later in the bathroom, Liberty tells Emma the only reason she won was because of Mr. Simpson's love for Emma's mom. And Emma confronts Mr. Simpson. There is a judging bias in your favor. Simpson's dating your mom. So? So his bias doesn't bother you. <laughs> Don't listen to her, Em. She can make up her own mind. It should bother you. Because you, Emma Nelson, are a woman of conscience. One simple solution. Turn in the award. So in Miss Kwan's class, Jimmy decides to have some fun and nominates Paige and Spinner to act out a scene. What's the situation? Situation, uh, Spinner's delivering a package and Paige is a lonely housewife. Very lonely. Uh, miss, I have a package for you. I'll bet you do, big boy. Uh, yeah, so, uh, just take it and sign, okay? What's the hurry, you big, handsome hunk of man? Why don't you, uh, bring that package in for a little drink? Uh, no, no, I can't, because, uh, because I hate you. Shh. I won't sign unless you come in for something. Gavin, we need to see your face so we can hear you. Miss Kwan, I can't. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that is why no one should ever wear track pants. Jimmy finds Spinner hiding out in the cafeteria and asks the lunch lady for some advice. Say you knew a teenager and he was always in the red. Would food have anything to do with it? Food? <laughs> you gotta be kidding. At your age, it's all about hormones. See? Mr. Simpson comes home from a date with Emma's mom, and Emma finally grows up and accepts Snake into the family. Episode 6 opens with Craig getting every man's first rite of passage, and that's him driving a car. Craig finds out he's able to have the whole house to himself for the entire weekend. So Craig invites Marco, Spinner, and Jimmy. But after hearing Sean's coming, Jimmy decides to leave, and Spinner wants to know what kind of party it is. No party, Spin. Girls. No girls. Booze. No booze. Donuts? That we can do. Then I am there. Ashley and her new best friend Ellie are getting piercings while Craig cannot wait for school to be over so he can finally get to the house. And Jeremiah is not happy. What's this? I go away for the weekend, you invite the whole school? Gotcha. <laughs> you should have seen the looks on your faces. Come here. Weekend supplies, gentlemen. Oh, yes! Oh, oh basic four food groups. You've got chips, 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 and craft dinner. Come on. Have a good weekend, boys. Ashley and Ellie make it to the piercing spot, and Ashley is nervous. So, uh, Attila, is that the same kind of needle you'll be using to pierce my belly button? No, no. <laughs> we're using a much larger one. Like that. Oh, wow. 
So boys night is not as fun as they thought it would be. Fish. You really don't have a queen. Fish. So Spinner goes and buys some spray cheese. Ah, come on, man. What? You guys, what? And Ashley's mom actually lets her have a piercing. Back at the house, the boys are bored as ever. And Marco makes Sean pull a prank on Emma. <clears throat> Hello, this is the power company. So this is what you do for fun, Sean. Prank your ex-girlfriend. You're dead, phone boy. You're dead. You're dead. <laughs> so Craig reminisces about how much better it is living with Joey. It tells him about how he let him drive, and they all come up with a bright idea. Yeah, let's go take it out for a test drive. You know, just around the block. What? On the road? No, we'd still get caught. Well, what about tomorrow? You want to? They make it to the lot and find the keys, and now they're on their way. So Ashley and Ellie are on their way to get pierced, and Ashley is hesitant. Meanwhile, the boys are driving, and Craig's going kind of fast. So back at the piercing spot, Ashley bails and doesn't want to do it anymore. So the boys almost get pulled over, but make it out alive, and they put the car back right just in place. But then... The worst happens. What were you guys doing? Do the words silent alarm mean anything to you? You, you, and you, gone. Now. So Ashley and Ellie are cool and Joey does some W parenting. Sit. You're not my dad. Sit. What you did was serious. You drove a car without a license. You, you could have killed somebody. I know. No, I don't think you do. If you were some punk off the street, I would have had you arrested and pressed charges. Craig, I trusted you. <laughs> it, was, it was stupid. It was, it was so stupid. I admit it. And I'm, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. You're grounded. Three weeks. Three weeks? And one more thing. Wait, Kid Elric. What, what am I supposed to tell my friends? We should have thought of that before you took the car. Episode 7 is another two-parter, and this one is titled Shout. So there's a soccer match going on, and Paige is checking out a boy from another school. So Spinner is trying to score a date with Paige, but Paige makes one thing clear. Hun, Spinner and I are just friends. Spinner celebrates in the locker room because he thinks he has Paige in the bag. But Paige gets the deets on the other boy, Dean, and he invites her to a party. JT is a new mascot of Degrassi, and him in Toby's locker is a pigsty. So Paige bails on Spinner for this other school party and tells him her grandmother is in the hospital. Spinner, sorry to bail grandma in hospital. X-O-X, -X. Paige. There, we're good. So Paige and Hazel make it to the party, and some girls try to warn Paige about Dean, but she isn't buying it. JT and Toby make up, and it looks like Spinner and Jimmy are at the party too. So Paige panics and asks Dean to take her somewhere quieter. So loud out here. Wanna maybe go someplace a little more private? After you. Right. 
Okay. Okay. After the party, Paige brags about it with her friends and Jimmy overhears. In computer class, Paige tells Hazel that it was more than kissing. If someone's in love, please, I'm not in love. Or Dean's not. He hasn't called. So? He will. He would have by now. They're all given time. <sighs> Hazel, you don't understand. He didn't just kiss me. He... What? So Toby isn't actually cool with JT and sets some boundaries. Meanwhile, Jimmy explains to Spinner what he heard. I'd cool it on the page, fine. She's busy, man. I mean, she's got media immersion. She's got the spirit squad. What are you saying? <sighs> Nothing. Forget about it. Fine. I just heard stuff. She hooked up. What are you talking about? That party we went to, she was there. <laughs> no, 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 no. Her grandma, her grandma was sick. It, I got, I got the, I, I didn't see her there. Yeah, um, that's because she was upstairs with Dean from, from Bardo. So Hazel is dying to know more about what happened upstairs, but the way Paige is describing it, doesn't seem like it's sitting too well with her. So Spinner presses Paige because he's super upset about the information. You know, your grandma, the one who was sick on Saturday night? Oh, uh, she's okay, thanks. And Dean, how's he doing? I know what happened, okay? Yeah? Were you in the room with me? Because I don't think you were. You lied to me. Don't touch me. Don't ever touch me. Why not? Everybody else does. And Hazel confronts Paige in the bathroom and we get the full story. I didn't even want to do it, Hazel. I said no over and over. You said no? And he didn't listen? He just pushed me down harder. He didn't stop. He wouldn't stop. Paige. Honey. If you said no... That's rape. <gasps> hey, Spirit. Dean, what are you doing in the girls' washroom? Thought I'd say hi. Okay. Relax. We had a good time at that party together, didn't we? Dean, you... I what? I didn't do anything. Just had a good time. You raped me. You wanted it, and don't no. you dare tell no. anyone any oh. different. Stop. No. Get off me. Stop it. <gasps> so after Paige's horrific nightmare, Terry comes through with some much needed good news. Pro voice songwriting contest celebrating what women have to say. Does your band have what it takes to make a splash on the music scene? Now's your chance. Tara, we don't have a band. PMS broke up, remember? <laughs> it's too perfect. Winning band gets a demo CD and a trip to LA. 
I told you. To perform live for record executives? That's a serious prize. That's not like winning some beach towel or movie passes. Terry, we could move to LA. <laughs> so with the big news, PMS needs a new lead singer because, you know. Paige, you are a hag. On two fronts. Your looks and your personality. <laughs> so Paige picks Hazel, but Hazel can't really sing. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Okay. And Terry is less than a stellar writer. I pray at night, you'll see the light. You'll come and hold me till everything's all right. <clears throat> I wish I knew just what to do to make this secret wish come true. Because my poem smells like poo. Meanwhile, we have presentations in Mr. Simpson's class, and JT is Liberty's choice of honor. Hello, students. <laughs> my hero isn't from the history books. He'll be famous later. The next, Jim Carrey. <laughs> <laughs> but JT doesn't seem to like the presentation too much and goes off on Liberty. Tribute. You want tribute? <clears throat> You take that back. I do too have friends. Ten textbooks, a thousand stuffed animals. <laughs> oh, and sometimes even my parents like me. Hazel's ass still can't sing. I wish I knew just what to do yeah, to make the secret wish come true. Uh, Paige, what are you doing? This isn't working. After Hazel's terrible attempt at singing, Paige gives in and asks Ashley for help. Ashley agrees and PMS is back. Plus Hazel. But Ashley decides to take Paige's advice too literal and makes the song about this. It's kind of heavy. Well, yeah, I mean, it's about rape. So the JT Liberty beef is still going strong. They argue rather intensely and she draws all over his locker. So Paige and Ashley have a huge argument about their song and you can see the subject matter is really affecting her. Liberty gets back at JT, but finds out maybe she took it too far this time. PMS is rehearsing the Not So Crazy song, and thank God Hazel came to her senses. Hun, you're not that bad. So Ashley tries to sing the new version, and once again... How many times do I have to say it? We're not using those lyrics. Paige, if I'm singing, those are the lyrics I'll perform. No, I can't believe I wanted you back in this band. So Ashley confronts Paige about the song, and she discovers the truth. I'm so sorry. Nobody knows. Only Hazel. I keep trying to forget, but I can't. He's in my nightmare. Have you been to a doctor? He wore a condom. Very thoughtful, huh? Well, what about a counselor? I can't, okay? I just, I can't. And I can't play that song. I know it's a better version, but it's okay. I'll play the other ones. It's okay. Liberty comes clean and takes the blame for JT, and it's time for PMS to shine. And you won't believe who decided to show up. So after seeing him, Paige sings the better version of the song, and I think Dean picks up on the hint. JT and Liberty become cordial again, and Paige does the right thing and officially asks for help. So Toby gets roasted again for being a nerd, and Sean gets praised for being in wrestling, which I think Toby should have been praised more, but this is what I look like in high school, so I don't think my opinion matters much here. So Toby's tired of being ignored and decides to join the wrestling team. And Terry randomly gets rid. Two days ago, a new coat. Yesterday, a new bag. Today, a new cell phone. We won't stand for it any longer. My dad made some extra money. What, did he rob a bank? Paige thinks she has. Sticky fingers. More like shoplifting. So Terry has been getting all this cash from modeling, but she's embarrassed to let people know because she thinks she looks fat. Terry, there's nothing to be ashamed of. At all, you're a model. Yeah, in a huge ad campaign. Yo, Beluga! Yo, shut up, moron. Hey, did the photographer use a wide angle lens or what? Yes, loser, just like you need a microscope to find your, I was gonna say brain. Sean and Toby wrestle since they're in the same weight class, and Toby gets pulverized. So after realizing he'll end up like Mr. Simpson if he doesn't get his shit together, Toby works his ass off to cut weight. So Toby takes laxatives and actually wins something in his life. Match to Isaacs. Welcome to the team. Yeah. But turns out he's been skipping breakfast and Ashley catches on. 
and Toby lets this win inflate his ego way too much. Take a picture. For the yearbook? Yeah, sure. It's a momentous occasion. Okay, now Kendra, you know, stand here, act like you're an all of me. Grab my arm if you want. Um, I think I'll pass. So, big meet today. We'll be there to cheer you on. My own personal fan club. Cool. Catch ya later. Meanwhile, Terry's ego is only getting smaller as she gets the opportunity to be in a national ad campaign. But after this asshole comments, she starts becoming really insecure about modeling. Toby is not eating to make weight and Ashley tries to confront him so he eats a huge serving of food only to puke it out later. Due to Toby not eating, his energy is extremely low and he can barely even type on the computer. Spinner lets Terry know that a lot of guys more than you think like a little junk in the trunk, especially nowadays. It's now Toby's time to shine and him not eating has only gotten worse to the point he can barely even see his opponent. So with all his low energy, Toby literally passes out in the middle of the competition. This asshole from earlier gives Terry his two cents and Terry gives him a taste of his own medicine. Hey, most girls on the planet look like this. So get used to it. No kidding. I made 500 bucks today as a plus size model. Yeah, plus size. What do you make ice cream boy? So Toby learns his lesson and finds just because he's into computers doesn't mean no one cares about him. Episode 10 opens with Craig walking into Manny's class and Manny fantasizing him falling in love with her. So Spike and Snake are getting engaged and Manny is going crazy over Craig. And Emma gives Manny the advice to just ask out Craig already. I think Craig really likes you. <laughs> then why doesn't he ask me out? Oh, this is torture. Manny, this is just what we talked about. You know what you want, so go for it. So Marco and Ellie are cool, but Hazel thinks Marco is cute and decided to make a move. Ellie writes a secret admirer email and sends it to Marco, but since Hazel made the first move, he thinks it's her. Mandy can't stop fantasizing about the almighty Craig and decides to go after what she wants and ask him out on a date. I like you. I can't believe I just said that. Well, nice talking to you. Wait, Manny. I, um, I like you too. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, sorry. I'm such a ditz. No, no, it was cute. So, Craig, tonight, wanna catch a movie at the mall? Movie? Sure. Oh, you mean with you? I don't know. I'm kidding. I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> okay, you so had me there. I couldn't resist. So pick me up at Emma's, okay? Seven? So Marco plays Mr. Detective with Ellie and is skeptical of who sent him that email. Craig is getting ready for the big day, same with Manny. And Manny pulls a spike and takes a pic of them both. So Manny is a hopeless romantic. So what happened? At first, I was so nervous. Then, I got into it. And by the end, I just knew Craig was the one. And Craig isn't feeling the date, but Manny describes it differently. I thought we'd just go to the mall, see a movie, nothing special. And then we get there. And oh my gosh, the carnival is on. So you don't want to see the movie? And miss all this. I love the balloons and the clowns. <laughs> oh look. And the cotton candy. It's so delicious. <laughs> I know, it's so delicious. Uh one cotton candy, please. Oh, no, it's for you. Don't be silly. And then the most incredible thing happened. My fingers brushed his lips. I thought I would die. But this is Craig's side of the story. And I was happy to be with her. But then... The carnival is on! Wait, so we're not gonna see the movie? And miss all this? 
I love the balloons and the clowns. <gasps> Look! <laughs> and the cotton candy. Yummy, yum, yum. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yummy, yum, yum. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's for you. Don't be silly. The cotton candy incident. <laughs> She nearly choked me with it. Look on the bright side, dude. If it was a candy apple, you would have been dead. So Manny goes in for the kill, but Craig can do it because... We want to know the real reason I couldn't kiss her? She reminds me of my five-year-old half-sister. Right. Um, that's, that's messed up. Yeah, that's so... So Manny is still reminiscing about their perfect first date. Ellie gets a bit more direct with her emails and Craig confronts Manny about their hot date. But Craig is a bit awkward about the whole ordeal. So Marco meets up with Ellie in the garden and out of embarrassment, she runs away. Later, she meets up with Marco and the feelings are mutual. So Manny is extremely awkward, like Jesus Christ, I'm ready to turn off this episode. I was photography club. Fine. What happened to my locker? I thought it might cheer you up. I uh, hope I'm not interrupting. Um, you said you wanted to sign this? Yeah, this is the petition protesting GM Foods, right? GM Foods? Stands for genetically modified. Does that make them good? I'll see you later, Craig. I don't think you should talk to her anymore. Uh, she's in my class. So, what are we doing Friday night? You're moody again. Is it your locker? You don't like it? No, Manny. I'm sorry. But it's not my locker I don't like. It's you. So episode 11 is the racism episode. You're under arrest. Crime terrorist chic. Very funny, Hazel. The way my mouth opened when I heard this, oh my god. Even Paige doesn't agree. Okay, Hayes, when I'm offended, you know you've really gone too far. So there's a big cultural project in Mr. Simpson's class, and everyone has to do a project on their own culture. In knitting class, JT gets his sexuality question when he's quite good at knitting. I don't even care. This stuff is for girls. And not even true. Just look at JT. Why, Liberty? I'm horrible. <laughs> Doesn't look like it, gay T. <laughs> so Hazel claims to be Jamaican when talking to Paige, and I'm calling Cap. And you're Jamaican, aren't you? Right. Jamaican. Mine. Liberty blackmails JT to helping her with her knitting project, but JT's too scared of anyone knowing he can knit. So Hazel goes to the local Jamaican mall spot, and she's a really good customer, so the guy hooks her up. Back at the grassy, it's finally International Day, and Hazel is keeping the lie going. And look at Mr. Simpson being cultural. Yeah, man. So Hazel gets confronted by the Somalian girls, and we get the truth about Hazel's heritage. So, you're Jamaican. What was your first clue? Just Aden, not really a common name. M maybe in Somalia. Really? And what's your last name? Oh, right. I don't care. Funny thing is, you sort of look Somalian, too. Really? Well, why don't you mind your own business, Frieza, before Jamaica declares war in Iraq? So JT is hard work at knitting, and someone trashed the Somalian girl's project. I can't. I can't. So after the crime, we all get a group discussion in about the hate crime that was committed with some interesting background music. It's just some kid trying to get attention. Come on, Sean, it's hate. Hate's an interesting word. It's like Hitler. He hated Jews. Both my great-grandparents died in the Holocaust. My parents, they're white. I'm Chinese. We're still a great family. I'm living proof that race doesn't matter. Interesting. Look, no matter what we say in class, it doesn't change anything. 
Nice attitude. Okay, I don't want to be all racist, but I don't exactly want to get blown out of the sky by some terrorists either. So after Hazel's crazy comments throughout this episode, she gets put into the principal's office to plead her case, and she gets lucky in the police find who trashed the project. So JT has some comments about this whole mess, and this happens. Still can't believe that could happen at Degrassi. I'm just surprised Farisa did her display on a rack at all. Why? I mean, it's not going to be too popular. So what is she supposed to do? Hide who she really is? JT, look, Liberty, I know you're going to say OK, so don't. You heard them. It's wrong to hide. It's a natural talent, JT. You should be proud. So knitting class comes back around, and JT's project is, of course, trash. But Liberty exposes JT for his talents, and he gets bullied. JT sewed this. He's the genius. What? What? <laughs> She's lying. He's lying. I'm all thumbs, sir. Compare my blood to that on the pillow, if need be. Forensics, sir. <laughs> JT Liberty, we'll sort this mess out after class, shall we? <laughs> JT's a seamstress. <laughs> Could you make me a matching blouse, Mr. Fashion Designer? <laughs> so Hazel confronts the Somalian girl about what happened at her previous school, and Hazel does some serious self-reflection. And JT gets some female attention for being so talented. We were wondering if you would make us skirt like Liberty's. We'd be happy to pay you. You're serious? Liberty's skirt was really great. I couldn't believe it. Who knew our own JT had so much talent? Ladies, I'll be happy to oblige. But I will have to measure you. And before the episode is over, Hazel tells everyone about her real culture. I lied to you all yesterday. Some of you, I've been lying to longer than that. So let me introduce myself. My name is Hazel Aden, and I was born in Mogadishu, Somalia, not Jamaica. And yes, I'm a Muslim. These are my parents. My mom came here first with me to flee a civil war. My dad, who was fighting in the war, came later. Fariza wears that headscarf thing. How come you don't? It's a hijab. And I do when I go to mosque. But to take it on full time is a personal and important decision. Anyway, I'm sorry I lied. Unlike you guys, I was ashamed of who I am. But not anymore. <laughs> Episode 12 is a two-parter titled White Wedding, and it's the episode that has Snake, Mr. Simpson, and Spike, Emma's mom, getting married. Meanwhile, Emma is freaking out like it's her wedding. So Emma doesn't want Sean at the wedding, but Manny does, and she invites him anyway. Meanwhile, JT and Toby have a great idea. Marriage equals stag party equals strippers, which equals tonight. A stripper tonight? So JT and Toby convince Craig to get a stripper for Mr. Simpson's bachelor party, but the search isn't going too good. Always go through down the road. Uh, we're actually here to inquire about Miss Fanny. Fancy. Fancy? If she's available tonight. Yes, for an outside engagement. <laughs> Fancy, don't do no square dance. Come back when you're legal. Wait, no. Until Craig asks Jeremiah, and he immediately goes for it, and the boys are ecstatic. Meanwhile, at the Nelson residence, the wedding cake is here, and it's the wrong cake. Happy Bat Mitzvah Rhoda? Emma is rightfully upset, but Spike lets her know there are more important things going on right now. The test is positive. I'm, I'm pregnant. So Spike fucks up Emma's hair, and Girls' Night is official with the original cast. So Manny swings by Sean's house and uninvites him just as he was telling his brother he was going to go to the wedding. Mr. Simpson and Jeremiah shows up, and Mr. Simpson does what every guy does when he finds out his girl is pregnant. Say the wrong thing. Definitely want kids. Definitely, and, and who knows? It could happen sooner than you think. Well, I sure hope not. <laughs> just like a man that wants to rush into anything. We got a lot on our plates right now. You know, I've got to settle in, get used to being a husband and a stepdad. Right. Oh, I'm not saying never, just not right now. Hey, you want to talk wedding? No, I figured it out. Thanks. So JT and Toby pull up to Craig's for the amazing show and things don't go as planned. Look, guys, whatever you're selling, we're not interested in, okay? What are you selling anyways? Actually, we're, uh, 
We're here for the show. Yeah. Fancy was sort of their idea. Well, really? Oh, in that case, no. What? Come on. No, get out of here. Both of your ages combined would not make you old enough. So Spike and the girls go out to eat at a Mexican restaurant and the whole pregnancy thing is starting to get to her. So Emma tries to confront her mother about all this news, but her mom's mind is still lingering on the big question. Okay, I know what you found out is beyond weird, but it's not the end of the world. I'm fine with this and Snake will be too. We just have to convince him that. Convince him? How? I don't know. However you convinced me about you two. If I even have this baby. What? We don't want any more kids right now. End of story. End of story for who? You're not thinking of having an abortion. I might. So after the dramatic reveal of Spike's plan, we get a lot more of a lighthearted story with JT and Toby trying to sneak in and see what's every man's goal. So Mandy and Emma talk about what just happened and Emma isn't too happy. And before you know it, the entertainment is here and the boys miss out on all the fun. So Emma leaves the house and we find JT and Toby outside. Ah! And Emma spills the beans. Is everything okay? I don't even know how to say this. I'll try because you're giving me a heart attack. Okay. Mom is pregnant and she's thinking of having an abortion. Now I'm worried about a stripper and she's pregnant. Snake, please just listen. Emma, why are you here? Why are you here telling me this? Because you need to know. Why you? Why not your mom? Why not your mom? I'm sorry. Really, what kind of family is this? You wait here and Joey will drive you home. Let me break the fourth wall for a second. That was some phenomenal acting from Stefan Brogan. Like, damn, bro, I'm sorry she had to tell you too. Fuck. The next day comes and Spike and Snake confront each other and things get heated. I've been trying to reach you. But not yesterday, not last night. No, right, because it was Emma that was looking for me. What? How does information travel in this family? Oh, oh right, every which way except from you to me. Emma. No, not Emma. This is about you and me. How could you not tell me that you were pregnant? We need to talk, but we are not doing it here. We are going to talk about this right now. Not here. Manny lets Emma know she's a huge know-it-all. Manny, mind your own business. Oh, that's funny. Didn't I tell you the same thing last night? I did what I felt was right. Yesterday, you freaked because I talked to Sean. What you did was so much worse. And Spike and Snake's conversation doesn't get any better. I just found out yesterday. Then you should have come to me. I know. You're from Emma <laughs> and an abortion. Do you really think I'd send Emma in the middle of the night to break the news to you? You know, sometimes it's like you and Emma are the couple, not you and me. She's my daughter. You can't expect that I'll just change our relationship. Of course not, but if this is going to work, then some things have to stay private. Oh, I don't like secrets, Snake. Eh? Neither do I, trust me. Sure you're not having doubts? Archie. This all happened pretty fast. We've known each other since junior high. Yeah, as friends. Maybe we're supposed to keep it that way. Emma last minute invites Sean to the wedding and he actually considers it. So the wedding is still going on. Fancy shows up and the boys get excited, but Fancy's man shows up and shows them who's really boss around here. Emma's hair is still messy and yay, Spike and Snake are cool again. And the wedding happens. Do you, Christine Nelson, take Archibald Rupert Simpson to be your lawfully wedded husband? I do. 
And do you, Archibald Rupert Simpson, take Christine Nelson as your lawfully wedded wife? I do. And by the power vested in me, I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. <laughs> And the episode ends with everyone being happy, licensed music, and Sean makes it for a dance with Emma. Episode 14 opens up with a clip that if I put on YouTube, this video wouldn't be seen by anyone. What are you looking at, fag? What? So Ellie and Marco's relationship isn't too good because Marco won't make any advances. So Dr. Sally, the sex education teacher, is back in town and the kids have a lot of questions about same-sex relationships. (laughs) Same sex means two guys. And meanwhile, Toby can't get him enough of Kendra. Spinner tries pressing Marco, but Marco makes his stance on gay people very clear. Hey, Marcy, don't forget your femme care. Shut up. What, distracted by Dr. Sally's advice on -on boy-on-boy love? Spinner, shut up, okay? Um, it was a joke, dude. Look, just tune him out. He's just trying to get you started. I hate fags, okay? What they do makes me sick. Hey, Marco. So just quit it. I mean, like yesterday, okay? So Toby's being super pushy with Kendra to the point that she's had enough. So Marco is curious about his orientation, but he cannot let his friends know. And when it's time to hit the bus with Ellie, she lays a tough question on him. Marco? Sorry, what? It's not so easy for me to ask. Oh, well, I'm listening. I am. Okay. Well... Are we just friends? Ellie, I like you. A lot. And I mean, you like me too, right? So let's go out. Like on a real day. You're serious? Yeah, totally. So it's time for a real date and Ellie is giving Marco all the signals. So after the horrendous date with Marco, Ashley confronts Ellie about Marco, but Ellie makes it clear. Maybe he doesn't like me that way. Or, um, maybe he doesn't like girls. From Spinner, I'd expect that. But from you? Disappointing. I'm just concerned. Because? What my family went through before my dad came out? Not fun. And not relevant. Marco's straight. And Toby is taking a page out of Manny's book and doing the absolute most. Someone's in love. Yeah, but uh, I think she's mad at me. And you're doing this for her. Big mistake. Trust me, Toby, it'll make her feel smothered. Smothered? No. You'll show her I care. Toby? What are you doing? For you. Thanks. So Marco tries to lie about going to second base with Ellie, but they not falling for that bullshit. Not after last night. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> okay, Del Rossi. Details. Burgers, movie, long walk home. How far did you get? Third base? Second base? Did you make out? Yeah. The last one. Uh, we like kissed. 
for like forever. And you're a bad liar. And Marco sets the record straight once and for all and kisses Ellie in front of everyone. Just a minute, guys. Hey, Ellie. Hey. I had a really great time last night. Yeah, me too. But I sort of forgot something. Oh, hey. 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 Marco! Yeah! They're waiting. See you later. Meanwhile, Toby's having girlfriend problems. Hey! Are you ready? Toby? Where are you going? What do you care? Oh, come on. No, you don't like me. I'm smothering you. I never said that. You didn't have to. And the group has a film project at Ashley's house. Ashley comes through with food, and Ellie goes to the bathroom and gives Marco the hint. Because he has to store his winter's food. So Marco and Ellie are alone upstairs, and Marco is having major problems getting his feelings across to Ellie. You're shaking. Should we go downstairs? No. I want to be here. Could have fooled me. Ellie, I like you, and, and I want to kiss you. Then kiss me. Am I doing something wrong? No, well, you're perfect. But you don't think I'm attractive. You're beautiful. That's not what I mean. Do you think I'm... hot? It's a simple question. You like girls a at all? Ellie, I want to. And I want you to so much. But if you can't, it's not fair to leave me hanging. Please. Please, would you tell me? Ellie, I don't know. Ellie. I'm just, I'm trying, I am, I'm just so confused. Now at Degrassi, Toby is having Kendra problems, but she sets the record straight and gives Toby a kiss. Now back to Marco and the boys having a great question. Marco Del Studley. Now, officially, Marco was just getting a glass of water. Of course. Of course. And how did that glass of water taste? Sweet? Like sugar, man. You guys can be officially jealous of me now. Jealous of what? Of you two and your extended bathroom break Friday night. You should be totally jealous. Sweet. Al. You're welcome. But I can't pretend forever. You can't either. I know. I was thinking that gay youth group Mr. Armstrong mentioned. If you ever want to go check it out, I could come with. Ellie. Sorry. Oh, thank you. Really. It's just that I'm not ready for that yet, okay? When you are, I'm there. So JT plays too much in science class and gets one week's worth of detention. But for some reason, I think he wanted the detention. So it's detention time and he's having a good time with Miss Hot Sikalakos. Or Hot Salakos, or Hot Salaka, I can't say it. So now JT's in media class giving all the details to Sean and Toby. And Spinner hasn't taken a shower in a while. Uh, no, just a simple bath. Uh, math. So JT thinks he has a shot with Miss Hot Salakos, and everyone is teasing him for it. Ms. Hot Salakos. That is so typical. <laughs> no, so JT, mature and... 
dumb. Why? What's wrong with a younger guy dating an older woman anyway? <laughs> There's a rule. The youngest you can date is half your age plus seven. So for Miss H, who's what? 30? That's 15 plus seven. Which is 22. And you're short by a couple of years. And more than a couple of feet. <laughs> Jimmy lets Ashley know he thinks her poem is trash, and JT is pushing this relationship to the next level, getting more private lessons with Hasalakos. And everyone will not stop teasing JT for his crush, and to shut up everyone, he does this. What's the matter, Sean? Huh? You jealous? <laughs> you want to be my other guinea pig boy? Oh, and what about you, Toby? My, 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 you're a furry little one. <laughs> <laughs> so Ashley tells Jimmy she actually liked his criticism and Jimmy is enjoying the attention, but Spinner has some words to say. Uh, can I be honest with you? Go ahead. We're tight. Okay. You and Ash getting back together? Stupidest idea I ever heard. What? Well, you become this weak, pathetic puppet when she's around. And she's the evil puppet master. Here. The, this is you. Ashley, I don't want to go whoosh. Okay, okay, I'm going whoosh. Ow, oh, that hurt. Ow. Okay, okay, I get it. Thanks for the honesty. Dude, my pleasure. Miss Hatsuakos lets JT know that she is really disappointed for his actions. Not because of what he did, but because he's really smart, but chooses to be the class clown instead. Jimmy is making an honesty list about Spinner to let him know everything about him after the incident. And JT notices the guinea pigs from his personal assignment with Miss H escapes. So Spinner and Jimmy realize the truth hurts. And JT and Miss H get some alone time and save the captured guinea pigs. But first, some real talk. Were you always a science teacher? I mean, never a, a model? No. Teaching is my life, JT. And that's why what you did really hurt me. I'm sorry, okay? I really am. So Sean and Emma are back together, and he finally invites her over to his place. But Sean's brother tell him to leave very abruptly and ruins their time. Sean and Jimmy make up for the first time in years, and he invites him to a party at his place. But Emma, of course, has to ruin things, and she forgot to tell Sean her parents had a special dinner planned the same night. So Jimmy has the hots for Ashley again, and explains to Spinner that she's changed. Meanwhile, at Sean's house, his brother is out of work, and Sean is stressed because of it. Dinner at Emma's is alright. Sean has holes in his socks, and the Nelson Simpson family is hitting him with some tough questions. So Sean, I uh, hear you're quite the basketball star. Uh, I'm okay, I guess. Well, don't be modest. I saw you tearing up the court the other day. Your parents must be proud. Uh, Emma, can you pass the uh, negator, please? Yeah, sure. Uh, they're in Wasaga Beach. I live with my brother. Oh, right. But, Mom, um, the California roll looks great. What does your brother do? Well, he's... <gasps> Sick. It's all right. Emma, it's all right. He installs side view mirrors on minivans. No, he's an auto worker. It's a noble profession. Yeah, he quit yesterday. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. So Sean is stressed the fuck out and decides to get rid of his problems with some liquid courage. Dinner is as awkward as ever, and Emma's mom tries to be nice. Oh, uh, Snake and I are really glad that you could come. It's given us a chance to get to know each other a bit more. No problem. Anytime. Hey, why don't I pack you up some leftovers? You, you already made me dinner. <laughs> Give you a nice home-cooked meal. Because I don't get nice home-cooked meals at home? Sean, we just have extra. For a welfare case. That's not what I was saying. Sean, where are you going? Sean! And damn, this nigga Jimmy shit is lit as fuck. Like, who the fuck are all these people? So Ashley and Terry show up and Ashley's not feeling it. But when Sean pulls up, he's off his rocker, but decides he's not lit enough after telling Craig he and Emma are through. So Ashley's trying to get the fuck out of here. 
after this happens. You plus me, destiny. Okay, let's go. But Dashing Jimmy steps in and tells her to stay a little longer. Emma eventually makes it to the party and apologizes to Sean, but this man is lost. But when Sean drops the bottle, <laughs> that nigga Aubrey ain't playing no more. So you, you come to my house to steal my parents' booze. Jimmy, come on, man. Y your parents are so rich, they won't even know. Just get out of here. So Sean and Emma leave, and Emma calls her mom to get them. Back at Degrassi, Jimmy and Ashley share a kiss, and Sean's life is falling apart. But Emma comes through and speaking that real shit. I mean, if she has to drive you home drunk a second time, it might be a different story. You don't have to worry about that, all right? The tracker gave me a lecture and I just don't... Okay, but this isn't about Tracker or your parents or my parents. This is about you and me. Sean, I like you. Thank you, too. So this episode opens with the girls playing stick hockey and Liberty is taking it pretty serious, but she doesn't make the cut and becomes the manager. Terry's back on her black magic shit, but when Paige asks her for a reading, she starts acting weird. Turns out Paige's lifeline doesn't exist and she'll be gone kinda soon. Meanwhile, Liberty is daydreaming about being a big shot stick hockey player. gets upset when she realizes the girls uniforms are ass compared to the boys so she puts matters in her own hands and decides to make the team some money she asks joey to sponsor the team but he's already sponsoring the basketball team and he says he'll think about it but liberty already has the mock-up ready and everything meanwhile Paige is still freaking out about the whole palm reading thing and terry gives her her condolences here Paige, to express my grief um thanks Anything I can do for you in your time of need, let me know. Anything. But turns out, Terry read the wrong hand and she's fine. So Spinner and Jimmy presses the girls' street hockey team, and the competition forms girls versus boys stick hockey. Winner gets the sponsorship. So Miss Hatsalakos can't coach because she's also a teacher, and Liberty tells the girls she'll coach. But Liberty needs to calm her ass down with all these rules, and the girls agree too. Later during practice, Liberty pulls up in a ridiculous Napoleon fit, and the girls laugh, but she means business. Paige is taking full advantage of this palm reading thing. Bye. Can I get you anything? Sure. And maybe you could even do my book report for Quan. With all this stress you brought me, how am I supposed to concentrate? You're right. I'm there. Liberty is taking the position of power all the way to her head, so Terry looks out for Paige and does a report, but doesn't do her own. What's up? Trying to figure out when I can get some sleep. Being Terry and Paige is hard work. Can I talk to you about that? What? Well, let's just say when I tell you, you're gonna wanna kill someone who's technically already dying. So the floor hockey game is on, and Liberty is the worst coach of all time. So Liberty gets kicked off as coach of the team. The team loses, and Liberty gets put on laundry duty. But Joey gets the hockey jerseys anyways, and now the Degrassi Street hockey team has jerseys. Good for them. So Jimmy and Ashley are together again, and Jimmy isn't vibing with the new Ash, but doesn't know how to say it, so he lies. And it's time for the lower class men to take sex ed. And instead of the wonderful Dr. Sally, we get the grumpy old coach Armstrong. And JT is not feeling it, so he entertains himself and this happened. Maybe we'd feel a little more comfortable if Dr. Sally was here. Like I told you at the beginning of the class, Dr. Sally is in China. Well, send her a plane ticket or something. Being sexually responsible means being prepared. But the best form of protection is abstinence. What's, what's abstinence? Not having sex. No sex, you don't get pregnant or contract an STD. <laughs> However, if you decide not to abstain, make sure you always have a condom on you. <clears throat> Meanwhile, the upperclassmen are watching Shakespeare and get assigned a project, but instead of each other, 
they get different partners. So Toby doesn't know how condoms work and JT gets the right idea of buying condoms to test them out. Meanwhile, Jimmy and Hazel are hitting it off and Ashley notices Jimmy has a picture of her old look in his locker and thinks it's kind of weird. So the boys go condom shopping and get some interesting pickups, but butcher the talk with the cashier. Oh, we just want to be ready, you know? He, he does. And, and me. And me. Together. But, but not together. Uh... Could we have those in separate bags, please? And uh, maybe your phone number? <laughs> so it's dinner time at Ashley's, and Ashley is pressuring Jimmy to see his perspective on underage sex. Relax. I just think that kids should have access to condoms. It's an important issue. Hey, Jimmy? Sure it is. Ah, uh, I'm starving. I don't know. Teachers giving out condoms suggest that kids should be having sex. Well, kids are going to have sex, Jeff, but at least they should be protected. Jimmy, what do you think? I'm not sure. You all have really good points. <sighs> okay, and what's your point? I think Jeff's right. Handing out condoms sends a message. Sorry. Don't be. You're allowed to have an opinion. I just wish I didn't have to drag it out of you. So JT gets another bright idea. That's it, Spinner. Walk and talk. <laughs> Ooh, JT the stud. <laughs> Check this out. <laughs> Guys, they're not mine. <laughs> then whose are they? They must be Toby's. That's Ew. gross. <laughs> It is so classic. Toby? Kendra? He's planning with no, my no, sister? No, no. Spinner, it's just. When I find Isaacs, he's finished. And Ashley now interrogates Jimmy to find out which version of her he actually likes. For your locker. Thanks. Um, it's supposed to replace that one. More pictures of you, the better. What? Nothing, just... What? Which picture do you like better? I like them both. You didn't answer my question. Ash! Speak your mind. I mean it, which do you like more? The old one, okay? The old one. Now, Ashley has an identity crisis between her old persona and her new one, and she shows up to school rocking her old look. This is who I've been since before we met. Ash. Wow. Well, you, you actually look alive. Thanks, I think. So Spinner isn't playing about the condom fiasco, and neither is Kendra. How old am I? Uh, 12. And what grade am I in? Seven. And you thought I'd have sex with you, pervert? Ashley is super insecure about her new personality. Once she meets up with Craig, they find a way to relate the play they're practicing to the plot. So convenient, by the way. So Toby saves himself from ass beating. It's judgment day, Isaacs. Uh, go ahead. But I want you to know that the reason I bought that stuff was because I really like your sister. I mean, I really like her, but... I wasn't thinking of having sex with her. We've only kissed one time. If you weren't thinking about it, why'd you buy all that stuff? Because if I was gonna have sex with Kendra, which I'm not, I'd wanna take care of her. I mean, having sex never even occurred to me until JT started talking about being prepared and- JT, uh, so this was JT's idea? No, 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 no. He just suggested that I buy that stuff, you know, ju you know, just in case. And Ashley is being weird around Jimmy. So it's playtime and Jimmy and Hazel kill it. But now it's time for Ashley and Craig. And their play is really informative. Wow. Intense. Uh, yeah, we saw it a bit differently. Ash? Um, it didn't seem like a comedy to us. It felt darker. Can you tell us why you felt that? It's about breaking a person, their spirit. 
taming them and making them into someone that they aren't. Making them into a lesser version of themselves. JT turns into Squidward. No, Spinner, please, please. I promise I'll never buy condoms again. It is not about buying condoms. It's about Kendra. There's enough pressure out there about having sex. She doesn't need any more from you two. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Isaacs, hit the lights. I give you the human glow. <laughs> <laughs> and Ashley meets up with Jimmy, and the Ashley Jimmy relationship is forever over now. Like, for real this time. I hope. So Emma is trying to get organic food into Grassy's cafeteria. <laughs> What's next? Fresh mountain spring water in the water fountains? Archie, be serious. I, I'm sorry, Em, but how many more times are we going to do this mock debate? Until I'm ready for the big meeting. Second period tomorrow. You're more than ready for Raditz. You're ready to take on the UN. And Jimmy pulls up fitted, I think, because the boys compliment him. Well, see now, here's a guy who never has to worry about getting a job. Whoa. Did you win the lottery? No. But dad took me shopping last night, a little belated birthday gift. Yeah, did you guys leave anything on the racks? So it's time for the presentation and Principal Radish is hearing the girls out. But getting GMO food is too expensive, so he declines their offer. And Spinner's trying to pick up some new drip, but... You got an MP3 player too? Man, this must have cost like 500 bucks. Yeah, it's just, uh, just dad going overboard as usual. I mean, it's like the Mercedes Benz of MP3 players. I guess. Um, why am I more excited about this than you are? It's just an MP3 player. Just an MP3 player. Man, since Quan broke my disc man last year, I'm back to cassettes. Sucks to be you. So Sean is encouraging Emma to keep pushing for GMO food in the calf and not give up. Meanwhile, niggas cannot stop hating on Jimmy's new drip. And Marco starts to point out some things he shouldn't say. Well, if your parents do love Spinner so much, why don't they take him shopping? I've seen you wear that shirt like 600 times now. You have not. Anyway, I like this shirt. Yeah, yeah, I like, I liked it too. Back when you bought it in grade seven. <laughs> Is that supposed to be a joke? Yeah. Really? It wasn't funny. Okay. We don't all have rich parents who will just buy us whatever we want. Ooh, Papa, please spoil me. My parents already do spoil you. Freeloader. So Emma is handing out flyers saying the school food is going to kill everyone and Radish puts a stop to it. Um, I'm just trying to inform people. School grounds are my jurisdiction. I make the rules. And spreading propaganda is unacceptable. But the school cafeteria snaps back at Emma with a nice video. And welcome to the Degrassi cafeteria, purveyors of fine food since 1999. <laughs> Some people have been questioning the quality of my food of late. Really, Sheila? But why? I just don't know, for I use only the finest of ingredients. And look what I have to offer. We have hot lunch specials every day for just $3.99. And Sheila sauce is always free. But after this, Emma declares war. JT, what were you thinking? And Toby, what are you doing? I had a trick question. You're actually buying this toxic junk? Hey, watch it, that's slander. Well, so was your commercial. Look at these fries. The potatoes were probably created in some laboratory. Give me back my lunch. Hey, 
better get running. Okay, someone is not making it out of here alive. Emma gets suspended and is in big trouble. Jimmy realizes his MP3 player is gone and this starts a fight between Jimmy and Spinner. So the next day comes around and Emma shows up to school anyway, but Mr. Simpson needs to have a talk with his stepdaughter about her attitude. But Emma is pushing this thing a bit far and Mr. Simpson isn't playing about this suspension. What is this really about? Hmm? Are you testing me? It's not you, it's Radich. And since you're my new dad, I thought you'd support me. Emma, you're suspended. You have to go home now. So Spinner wants to flex on Jimmy so bad, he plans on selling Jimmy's stolen MP3 player to buy that jacket he's been wanting. Meanwhile, Emma is protesting for what is right, but Radish intervenes. This interview is over, Ellie. You about done here, Miss Nelson? I'm not on school property, and I'm not leaving until my voice is heard. Oh, your voice will be heard. That sounds like a threat. Sir. It's a suggestion. You either apologize for all this on tomorrow morning's video announcements, or you get a one-week suspension. And Jimmy apologizes for what he said to Spinner, but right in the middle of his deal. Okay. I got your money. Give me the goods. <laughs> uh, Sully here, he just owes me some money. A uh, loser owes me an MP3 player. Top of the line, the best. 120 bucks. Wow. Sounds like a steal. So Emma is pushing this thing pretty far, and she's not trying to plead her case on the morning announcements. But Mr. Simpson lets her know what's up. As a part of your family, I totally support you. But as your teacher, you're stuck. <laughs> yeah, I'm stuck. So, I think you're gonna have to make this decision on your own. So Spinner apologizes to Jimmy about what happened with his MP3 player and picks up a job at the calf. Emma decides to go on the air, but instead of apologize, she does this. I'm sorry the food fight happened and for making a mess in Sheila's cafeteria, but other than that, I feel I did nothing wrong yesterday. You can agree or disagree with me about GM Foods, that's not the point. The point is, I have a right to express my opinion, and you have a right to be informed. If fighting for that will get me a week's suspension, then I can live with that. Okay, um, turning to sports. Guess I'm going home now, huh? Our Panthers advance to regional Yes, you are. So Paige is in therapy for the terrible events that happened at that party, but she decides she's over what happened. So Paige is being really nice, which is kind of weird. And Marco and Ellie's strange relationship, not relationship, is going okay. So at cheerleading practice, we learn that a new school is joining the upcoming basketball tournament, Bardell. Your boyfriend's back. He's a, he's coming to my school. So Paige is trying to get Dean's ass in jail, but it's hard to prove that Dean assaulted her since there's no evidence. We don't have DNA samples or photos of bruising. So what, I go to court, tell the truth, and I could still lose? Possibly. That's so unfair. Okay, hold on. 
Don't get too discouraged. If this is what you want, then we will make the best case we can. Forget it, I, I just thought I'd ask. So Ellie has mixed feelings about the relationship since, you know, Marco doesn't really like her. So Paige dips out on cheerleading for the game and JT is trying to convince her to still go through with it. Ellie and Marco are working on their project and their awkwardness is just bleeding through the screen. Action. Great, now arm behind me, raise the perfume and say. Share your scent. Sing a duet. Yeah, that was great. Let's move on. So Paige decides to cheer anyway, and Dean confronts her, and this dude just screams creeper energy. Spirit, hold up. So what's in today's plan? A little rah-rah cheering or another serenade from your little girl band? This is my school, and I don't want to see you or talk to you again. Lighten up. We had fun. Fun? You think what you did to me was fun? Night of the party. You were there. Who did Spirit come to see? Right. Me. I said no. Everyone there saw a girl who wanted it. Bad. And she got it. Go shake your little pom-poms and look cute, Spirit. I got a game. So Ellie changes their project last minute and Marco's cool with it. And Dean will not leave Paige alone. So Ellie got Marco on his opium shit and he thinks it's goofy, but Ellie is tired of Marco's bullshit and they officially end it. So Hazel told Spinner what really happened between Dean and Paige and Paige doesn't like what she hears and decides to go home, but notices something terrible on her way home. Are expected to be in the gym or in independent study. Hey Paige, can't wait for half time. I'm nailing that flip. What's going on? Um, earlier I saw you and Dean talking outside. <laughs> he started talking to me. No problem, just um, just don't be alone with him, okay? Someone warned me about him once and I should have listened. He seems nice. He is nice. Manny, what do you know? You talked to him for five minutes. I know you guys had a date and I know he never called you back and I know you're jealous. Get over it. That's fucked up, I ain't gonna lie. So it's time for the big basketball game and Paige is nowhere to be found. JT ends up finding her outside and he tries to console her, but JT doesn't understand the seriousness of the situation. Go away. Paige, you say that all the time, but we both know you don't mean it. Yeah, well this time I do. Paige, the squad needs you. Leave me alone. It's just some stupid guy, right? You mean Dean? Bardell's resident sports hero and... and rapist? Yeah. He raped me. And no one in the world seems to be able to do anything about it. So after the big fight, Spinner talks to Paige and finally he now understands what happened. Paige, what's going on? Nothing. JT in the mascot outfit attacking Dean, that's not nothing. 
Paige, just... Spin, could you please? Something happened to you. I just got what I asked for, right? He took it too far, like Hazel said, right? Didn't he? Hey! Hey! You're not going anywhere! Your mascot came at me. You think that's what this is? Spinner, stop! What? He deserves it! Spinner, please! Water boy, your boyfriend? I have one thing to say to you, Dean. Get ready, because I am coming after you this time, not like Spinner or the mascot. For real. Meanwhile, Ellie is editing the video and Marco comes in and talks about their situation, relation thing. So much for us being as one, huh? I'm sorry. Elle, you're my best friend. But if that's not enough... It's really hard, Marco. Pretending to be something... something you're not. I know. But did you ever think about how hard it would be for me? Are you still confused? No. Ellie. I'm gay. And you and me? We'll always just be friends. Paige keeps her word, and now she's taking his ass to court for what he did. And can we please get a round of applause from Paige, because I'm proud of her, truly. Not only that, Spinner buys lunch for Paige, and she ends up asking him out for being so brave. But let's be real, JT deserved it more. Rapist. Episode 21, another two-parter in the last two episodes of the season. And the first episode is titled, Tears Are Not Enough. And this is how it starts. You need a little help from your old science study partner. Dad? doing here? I just thought I'd come by and see my son. Meet his friends. Um, I'm Ashley Kerwin. Hi, Ashley. Nice to meet you. And you... Can I give you a lift home? I live with Joey now. To Joey's. We can catch up on the way. Um, I, I can't. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Maybe we could have dinner tomorrow night. You can come by work. Dad. Just think about it, okay? I gotta go. You seem nice. Yeah, we didn't have a belt in his hand. You're not actually gonna go, are you? So Craig's at the house and Joey is stressed the fuck out and spills orange juice everywhere. Back at Degrassi, Craig is stressed the fuck out too and blows up on Spinner. Ashley's being nice to him, though, and gets him to open up about how he's feeling. I wish that was it. Hmm. Your dad, huh? You two don't have the best relationship? Uh, no. Sorry. We, we talk on the phone once in a while, but yesterday, it's the first time I've seen him in months. People can change. I guess. In Miss Kwan's class, JT is struggling. So much, in fact, he does the worst thing on earth. Acts liberty for tutoring lessons. But there's a catch. The dance? What? No, that's a ripoff. That's the price you'll pay. You want me as a tutor? I want you as a date. Final off. Fine. We catch Craig at the hospital to catch up with his dad, and looks like they're on for dinner. Hey. So you're here for dinner? 
Uh, yeah, if you still want. Of course I still want. I'll be right back and go, okay? Greg? Hey. 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 So, how's life up at boarding school? Boarding school? Um... Yeah, it's, you know, it's great. Your dad didn't tell me you were back in town? No, uh, surprise visit. Well, it'll do your father good. That's the first smile I've seen on him since you left. Gregor? Ready? Bye. Bye. Now it's dinner time and Craig confronts his dad about the whole boarding school thing. And Craig's dad is starting to take anger management classes. Meanwhile, back at home, Craig and Joey's relationship is starting to strain, so Craig goes over to his dad's house and asks him for help with his homework. I only could figure out what the coaster's for. Craig? I just don't want rings on the table. It's not a big deal. JT is talking to Toby about his Liberty problem, and Liberty is getting distracted. Correct. Capitals of Europe. Albania, Turin. Austria, Vienna. Belarus, Minsk. Minsk. Hello? Do you prefer a chartreuse or a fuchsia? I can't decide on my gown for this dance. Liberty. It's a luau, okay? You don't need some big gown. I mean, it's not even a... I know, it's not a real date, but I just want something you'll like. It's now exam time and Liberty is excited, and Craig doesn't seem to be doing so bad on his exam either. So JT is asking Paige to the dance. Uh, yeah. And you know, you can make it even better by answering one little question. The dance? JT! You finished before me. I'm guessing you did well? Uh, yeah. Can we maybe talk later? <clears throat> All right, um, love to stay and soak up your collective joy, but the million dollar question, read the dance? Yeah, the Hawaiian Surf Paradise. Heather Sinclair's title, not mine. Whatever. Do you want to, you know, You want to help Liberty pick out her outfit? She's my date. Um, I'd love to. You know, for a second there, I thought you were gonna ask me. A reminder from the dance committee that today is the final day to Thanks. Yeah, ask you, Paige. Yes, that's funny. And Craig asks Ashley to the big dance too, but then Craig's dad shows up. Dad, what are you doing here? I just want to see how you did on the exam. Uh, it was great. I should go. Nice to see you, Dr. Manning. Nice to see you too, Allison. It's Ashley. Interesting girl. She is. So, dinner tonight? Celebrate the exam? Um, I'm supposed to babysit till late. I can push it off. I'll meet you at the Bistro at 8.30. Craig. Right. I'll be there. Okay, see you. Now at the house, Craig is babysitting and Joey has a big car sale, so he's gonna have to run late, but he does end up making it. Sorry, uh, Joey got held Just up. sit, sit. Mm. A little present. Tickets to London? We'll start there, take the channel to Paris, rent a car for a couple of weeks. Dad, that's awesome, really? This is the perfect opportunity for you and I to acclimatize, you know, before school starts. What do you mean? It's time for you to come home, Craig. I mean, Joey's was necessary but it's not the best environment. Um, but I, I like it at Joey's. Of course you do, with Angela there, but look at your study situation. It is not stable. 
Being at Joey's is stability. Dad. You know. Dad. <laughs> so once Craig declines his dad's offer, he goes outside to confront him. Dad, wait up! Are you talking to me or are you talking to Joey? Oh, that's not fair. Life's not fair. And you're right, Joey is better for you. This way you can kiss your potential goodbye, settle for some interesting little goth girl, Don't talk about can drop, like that. and one day you can take over the car lot. Oh. Oh. <sighs> Craig, I'm so sorry. It'll, it'll never happen again. you were gonna say? Because that's what you always say! Because you always screw up. No, Dad, you're the one who screws up! It won't change! Ever! Craig goes back home and Joey sees what happened to him, and Craig ends up deciding to go to child support to fix his situation and make sure he never sees his dad again. But come morning time, the police are at his door and... I don't know how to tell you this. What? Your dad had an accident last night. He's in the hospital? No, no, sit. Sit. didn't make it. What? What does that mean? I'm sorry, Craig. Tears Are Not Enough Part 2 opens with Mr. Simpson splashing his business all over the school. Craig Manning's father died over the weekend in a car accident. Uh, Craig's okay, right? I mean, he wasn't in the- No, he's fine. But he won't be back for the rest of term. But turns out. Sorry I'm late, sir. Is something wrong? Uh, no, no, we just, um, <laughs> we weren't expecting you. So everyone's setting up for the big end of the year dance and Principal Radish is letting him know he can take it easy if he wants to. So Paige wants her and Spinner to win Luau King and Queen since the dance is Hawaiian themed. Craig passed his exam and he tells Jimmy and Marco about what happened. Hey, that's my man. Wow, it's amazing, buddy. Yeah, my dad actually did something worthwhile for me. He's a good study partner. Look, we're really sorry to hear about your dad, man. Yeah. So you okay? Guys, I'm fine. Hey, I'm the lucky one. My dad died. I I walked away with a scratch. Oh. And I thought you weren't in the car. Friday night. We're like speeding down the highway. My dad's mad. He won't slow down. Ahead there's a rig. I see it. My dad doesn't. And we hit. Hard. Guys, I was at Joey's when it happened. <laughs> How'd you going though? <laughs> Jimmy is still pressed about Spinner stealing his MP3 player and decides to do something to get back at him. Some of today's lunch specials? Yeah, go ahead, laugh it up, but you won't be laughing when I'm voted Lua, okay? Okay, guys, can we just do this later? Yeah, we'll do this later. Count on it. Oh, we'll do this later, okay. Okay, Jimmy, give it up. He and Pigeon make an amazing Luau King and Queen. All students who are interested in running for Nebraska's Luau King and Queen and who have not registered should see Toby Isaacs in the media version lab before the end of the day. Just the girl I was looking for. Oh, hi. The dance, you still going solo? Because you're not anymore. Um, okay. 
And who knows? I mean, maybe we'll even walk away with the Luau crown. Paige wants that crown. So? It's a free country? Yeah, but she's my best friend. And you've been in her shadow for how long? Isn't it time for Hazel Arden to step into the spotlight? Think about it. So it's official. Jimmy and Hazel are on the ballot, and Toby has some wise words to say. What does it matter anyway? Let's be some stupid luau thing. And that's why I love you. No, no, not not love you. Just like you, a lot. Now Craig's back at his dad's house to collect the last of his stuff, and he's taking it all right. He shows up to the funeral, and Craig starts acting very strange about the whole thing. A good friend. Top-notch surgeon, an absolutely devastating squash player, and a dedicated father. But if you were to ask him, this last role was the most important. Please. Albert told me time and time again how his son Craig was the greatest gift he'd ever received, a gift he cherished, a gift he never wanted to relinquish. <laughs> Maybe Craig needs Those of us who knew Albert knew his dedication Craig, to helping others. <laughs> Sorry. This is why he was a great doctor and a great surgeon. We're gonna miss him. <laughs> <laughs> Can you believe that idiot? Albert Manning was a dedicated father. <laughs> Craig, you you and your father had a complicated relationship. Yeah, he beat me. Not gonna do that again now, is he? <laughs> I'm happy, Joey. I'm really happy. Because he's dead. Because he's gone for good. Back at Degrassi, Craig asks Ashley if she's excited about the dance, and turns out he put them on the ballot too. But Ashley isn't too psyched about this information. So Spinner needs to win this competition and decides to get a tan to up his prospects. But Spinner has terrible claustrophobia and can't stay in the machine. I'm scared. I want to go. I'll tan my way. You tan yours. Okay. And Joey confronts Craig about his strange outburst in feelings. Hey, listen, before you go to Aruba, I wanted to... Wait. Right. Um, look, I, I hate to bring this up, but we have to go over what you're going to say tomorrow with Children's Aid. Now? Yeah, if that's okay. Um, just I'm a bit distracted, you know. Ashley, the dance. You don't think I should go, do you? No, I, I do. I, I think it's great you're trying to have fun, Craig, but... But what? I'm fine. <sighs> no one is fine after losing someone. I wasn't with your mom. I just think the pain is going to catch up to you. I've got a dance to go to. It's now time for the big dance, and Jimmy is still mad about that MP3 player thing. To Grassy Island. What are you laughing at? Your lame attempt at stealing our votes? Red, I don't have to steal anything tonight. But hey, maybe Spin could try. Dude, like ancient history. JT and Toby are having a good time, and Ashley is not playing about this opium shit. So it's time to see who won the Luau King and Queen competition, and it's who you would least expect. From grade nine, Ashley Kerwin and Greg Manning! But as soon as it happens, Craig has major PTSD. So Ashley is helping Craig out, and Craig has finally had enough. I knew coming here was a mistake. What? It's too soon. You should be home. Look at you, like, revel in this anymore? Miss, Miss Goth, Miss Doom and Gloom? 
That's not fair. I'm just concerned about you. Well, I'm sick of you. And everyone just being concerned. Craig. Let him cool down. Everyone back into the dance. I'll check in on Craig in a minute. So Terry, being another person who has lost a parent, talks to Craig about it. <laughs> this was supposed to be my night. I'm with Ash, we're the stupid luau king and queen. When my mom died, I was at my friend's birthday party. I was having a great time. And then my dad came to tell me. At the party? Yeah. I was so mad. Because she died? No. Because I couldn't play pin the tail on the donkey. It's a fun game when you're a little kid. Exactly. It wasn't until later that it hit that, that she was dead. Before my dad died, I wanted him gone. <sighs> so why am I crying now that he is? Because you love him. Now, Jimmy, Hazel, Spinner, and Paige talk about how shallow they are for taking the competition so seriously. Ashley looks like she's going to leave after everything that happened, but not before this. I think we owe everyone a dance. So season two is now over and there's a lot to unpack, like a lot, like a lot. So let's start off with the two parters we got this season, the two parter introducing Craig's character and the two parter we just watched. So Craig is an amazing character. I love how jarring his character is because from the first episode, your impression is what's wrong with this guy? He's taking candid pictures of Joey's kid. Like this guy is weird. Just to find out he's actually related to Joey with him being his stepdad and his father abusing him just perfectly explains why his character is the way he is. Everything to mannerisms, his awkward date with Manny, everything. And later with the last two episodes of this season, I mean, we find out his father died in the car crash and it's like jesus christ he not only lost his mom but now his dad like i just feel so sorry for this kid and can we please talk about how perfect every new character is marco is the perfect foil to the boys relationship while spinner jimmy sean and craig are obviously rule breakers marco is the perfect foil to that relationship to break up the tension not only that his subplot with ellie and him being gay is extremely ahead of its time like, like do they have a fortune teller on set or what not only him coming out but his relationship with ellie makes so much sense for the time as in the early 2000s being gay was like walking around with a gun to your head so him only confiding in ellie his best friend and her doing her best to keep his secret is just so cute and just perfect like even when they kiss you can tell something's not right there and ellie 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 so Ellie is the perfect friend for Ashley, not only because they both be on the opium shit, but because after everything she's been through, you can tell that Ellie is the type of friend who doesn't give a fuck about who you used to be, but who you are now. And Ashley more than anyone needs that right now. So Hazel was in a few episodes last season, but she's now officially part of the main cast and she's really boring. There's a great video on YouTube that talks about Degrassi's mistreatment of black girls or just black people in general on the show. So I highly recommend you watch that to see what I mean, but she's just a foil to Paige 
overarching plot this season. And she has that storyline where she hides that she's Somalian, but is the actress even Somalian? I'm going to check that right now, actually. Wow. So either Wikipedia is wrong or she's actually fucking Jamaican. So they fabricated those pictures for the presentation. Okay. If she is Somalian, I didn't do enough research. Please leave it in the comments. I don't know what's going on here. So Kendra, Toby finally gets a girlfriend. So Kendra is a nobody character. Like you'll see what I mean in later episodes, but Kendra is literally only here to be Toby's love interest. But what she said in that racism episode is hilarious. My parents, they're white. I'm Chinese. We're still a great family. I'm living proof that race doesn't matter. Interesting. All right, so I already said way more than I did for my season one overview because as the show goes on, shit just gets crazier. Not only that Craig storyline, but can we talk about Paige's arc this season? Like, no matter how many times I watch this scene, it hurts the same. Every time Paige is on screen, she's just being such an amazing character. Time and time again, we see her on some boss shit. Rarely do we ever see her be shy or even sad, and this arc, phew, this arc is something else. I love the cute JT Page relationship, and I also like Spinner and Page, but I don't know. I feel like Page could do better than the nigga who don't take showers, but that's just me. Uh, no, just a simple bath of math. Not only that, but we have the marriage episode, and Emma is proving to be the most annoying character in Degrassi. A lot with this arc. At this point, she's pissing me off more than Liberty. And Liberty's whole character is supposed to be annoying. I mean, I understand. I wouldn't want Mr. Simpson's goofy ass to be my dad either, but to tell the man your mom is pregnant, not only that, she's planning on killing it. Like, bro, when I was a kid, my mom would say, stay in a child's place. And I never knew what that meant but after watching that episode, now I fucking know. Other than that, this season was great for building character relationships, introducing new relationships, giving more context and backstory to our characters, strippers. I mean, overall, a great season. Honestly, way better than season one, but I'm telling y'all, this shit only gets crazier. Season two, nine out of 10, amazing television. Thank you to everyone who tuned in for season two. Comment cookie this time on this video so I know who actually watched the full thing. Please leave a like if you enjoyed and don't forget to subscribe so you can be notified for when part three drops. Also, don't forget, I have a Patreon where you can watch part three right now. So if you're interested, link will be in bio. Once again, thank you guys so much. I put a lot of work in this series. So seeing your guys support means the world to me. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in part three.